Hi, this is Brian Kim. I want to share with you case number 165 in the best way to do cataract surgery series. This is a three to four plus dense lens and I'm going to perform double chop, cross chop, mechanical fracturing and showing how I'm able to leverage mechanical fracturing forces to reduce ultrasonic energy. I'm going to also show you in slow motion how I actually execute the double chop and cross chop maneuvers. Again, the key is having opposing crushing forces around the lens material. So here is the lens. Again, it's a pretty dense lens. I'm using the cotton tip to help steady and control the eye. And this is a corneal marker, which will help me to center and size the rexus. Again, holding the eye still, I ask the patient to look down. And then I go ahead and have a nice flat approach, making sure I'm parallel to iris plane. I like to make an incision relatively long, which will allow me to have a nice corneal shelf and allows me to, to achieve a self-sealing incision. And using that cotton tip is really important to give you more control. This is intracameral lidocaine and then some intracameral epinephrine. And then this is some dispersive viscoelastic to fill the anterior chamber, flatten the capsule, and to coat the corneal endothelium. I'm using the cannula to control the eye, and this is a triplanar corneal incision. I make a vertical groove, place the blade into the deep part of the groove, tunnel through the cornea, very controlled. Again, the cannula is doing all the work move the eye towards me with the cannula once I am ready to enter, and then I enter. It's nice to have a passive fixation rather than grabbing the eye. This is a Haldi Perkar sharp tip forceps. I puncture the center, pull the tear down towards me, grabbing the right side of the tear, and then I'm able to go around circumferentially, again using that corneal mark that I made as a guide, which will hopefully help me to center and size the rexus nicely here. Again, very well controlled, minimal OVD egress with these forceps. Low profile, sharp tip forceps. Burps and viscoelastic out. And this is the Capsular fornix hydrodissection technique. I place a cannula under the rexus edge, contra incisionally, point the tip down, get a nice wave, turn the tip back up, decompress on the left side. The lens was, you know, trying to come out actually there. Sweeping on the left side, freeing up the anterior capsule, and then doing the same thing on the right side, and the lens begins to spin. Irrigating the surface of the eye, adjusting the sleeve. Lifting the incision with a chopper going in with irrigation off to minimize decimase trauma. You can see the reverse pupillary block. I lift the iris to alleviate that reverse pupillary block. So I place the chopper under the rexus edge, contra incisionally, rotate the fake tip vertically sub incisionally, crushing the lens in half. That's double chop, placing the chopper around the right hemi nucleus. Pulling it centrally toward the fake tip, which is positioned between the lens pieces, and it fractures the right hemonucleus very efficiently, easily, confidently. Placing the chopper around that first quadrant, again crushing the lens between the instruments, making it into a smaller fragment, grabbing that first piece with some vacuum, lifting it right out of the bag. You can see how dense this nugget is right here. So again, this is in slow motion, pronating my hand, sliding it under the rexus edge. Placing the chopper at the lens equator, rotating the fake tip vertically sub incisionally, getting into the meat of the lens, crushing the lens in half because I'm able to crush the lens with opposing forces from the instruments. Separating the lens, you can see there's clear separation through and through as I'm cracking. Again, pronating my hand, sliding the chopper underneath the rexus edge contra incisionally around that right hemonucleus, turning the chopper vertically now, pulling it centrally toward the fake tip. Again, the phaco tip is between the lens pieces deep. As a result, I'm able to crush the lens effectively in half, and that is the cross chop dividing the right hemonucleus in half. Sliding the chopper underneath the first quadrant, bringing the chopper hooking the peripheral lens, crushing the lens between the instruments again, between the phaco tip and the chopper. I'm able to fracture that first quadrant into a smaller piece in half, grabbing that one fragment with some vacuum, high vacuum, grabbing it, 
getting a little bit of purchase, and then I'm able to lift it up out of the bag. So again, with these really dense lenses, there's more of a jigsaw effect because the lens pieces are so big and stiff, and there's less soft material there. But you saw it very well controlled. The lens didn't tiddly wink, it didn't tilt, it didn't cause any zonular stress, this is tr no translational movement for the bag. Anyone who tries to tell me that this is traumatic to the zonules, honestly, they've never done the technique. So anyone who's criticized the technique, my feeling is until you do the technique, you really don't know what you're talking about. Try to do the technique, execute the technique, and you have a better idea. It'd be like someone criticizing, you know, an electric car. I don't have an electric car, but, you know, criticizing all the bad things about it, never having driven one. So, you know, unless you try it, you have no idea. You can look at it and see, oh, this is gimmicky. This is not really very helpful. But until you perform these techniques and actually see the results and clear corneas postoperatively, much more controlled, I have less uh, complications really doing it this way. And so I haven't really turned back and, and looked back. So I placed a chopper around that second quadrant, pulling it centrally toward the fake tip. Again, it's another cross chop maneuver. You can see how easily it cuts the lens. Remember, the lens material is pretty dense, but you know your instruments are made of metal. And so again, using the fake tip as a second chopper, and again, not having to use vacuum when I'm actually crushing the lens piece. Why? Because there's no need for it. And if you use vacuum and you have the fake tip deep in the bag, that's not really safe. So you just have irrigation on, you're able to position the instruments around the lens piece and then just fracture the lens. It's really very elegant, very efficient, and to me, the best way to disassemble the lens. So you can see this is a, quite a dense lens. I'm very carefully and, and just very, you know, taking my time, fracturing the small bits in here and there. You saw that I just removed that really dense central nugget. Again, I'm just going to go around little by little, breaking off small pieces, sandwiching the lens pieces into smaller and smaller pieces. And once you get that entire first hemonucleus out, you'll see that things, you just have a lot more room, but you see I'm able to hook the peripheral lens pieces up with the chopper, very efficient, very easy, minimal zonular stress doing this. So I turned that second hemonucleus in front of me, placing the chopper around the lens piece, getting the instruments around the lens, crushing it completely in half, Again, performing the same maneuver around that third quadrant, hooking the peripheral lens. You can feel when you got that lens. It's like, you know, when you know you have a fish when you're uh, fishing on a fishing pole, you just feel it. And so I'm able to crush the lens again with successive crushing forces, mashing the lens pieces between the instruments. And then once I have smaller and smaller pieces, I go ahead and emulsify the lens pieces. Again, by doing it this way, you're sparing the amounts of, of ultrasonic energy that you're using. You're selective about when you use ultrasonic energy. You're using primarily crushing forces to crush the lens into smaller and smaller pieces. You're able to utilize vacuum, certainly, but you're, again, you're trying to be really judicious when you're actually using vacuum as well, again, because you want to make sure you don't cause any problems. Now I'm trying to hook the peripheral uh, lens of this fourth quadrant. You can see it doesn't quite get around it. And when you don't get it, you can feel it just kind of the lens moves. But once I had it and I hooked the peripheral lens effectively, then I was able to fracture the lens completely in half by positioning the instruments around it. And so again, that is a perfect illustration. When you get that chopper around the lens, if it doesn't capture and hook the lens at the equator, you can tell you just can't crush it. But once you do, you're able to hook that peripheral lens. Now you have the lens held on either side and then you can crush it. Again, it's a very similar principle of catching that fish on the hook. You know, once you have it, you know you have it, and then you can execute that crushing technique. So I place the chopper around that last piece. You can see once I hook the peripheral lens, the lens actually kind of pops up a little bit, and then I'm able to fracture the lens here. Again, using multiple fracturing forces, crushing the lens into smaller and smaller pieces. And once the lens pieces are small enough, go ahead and pulse with a little bit of ultrasonic energy and vacuum to remove the lens piece. Again, very well controlled. I'm able to execute the technique. I'm able to, again, direct all the forces towards the center. So this is very zonule safe and, and friendly. Again, because I'm judicious about vacuum and ultrasonic energy, Again, risk to the posterior capsule is very low, even though I'm able to use a phacotip as a chopping instrument and put it deep into the bag. 
Again, I'm not initiating vacuum or ultrasonic energy with those maneuvers, so it's very safe. It's just acting like a chopper. I'm using it for the manual fracturing purposes in those moments. And then I can switch gears and then emulsify the lens piece the way the finger tip is intended to be used. So that's the concept. The finger tip is, is really kind of a dual function instrument. FACO in the traditional sense, but also a chopping instrument. So all the pieces are now out. Very clean bag here. You can see I take the chopper out, go ahead and eat that small piece at the wound, push BSS in, take the FACO tip out, and I go in with the ionic hand piece. I start polishing underneath the Rexus edge because, again, the bag is so clean in this case. Of course, that doesn't always happen. That's just kind of a luck of the draw. But a nice clean bag got through that really, really dense lens. You see the CDE is less than double digits. This patient really going to have a nice clear cornea postoperatively, very well controlled lens disassembly, fracturing the lens pieces into smaller and smaller pieces. You're going to see I'm going to pulse into the subincisional space here with the cannula. This gives me the ability to flush out any remnants there. You saw some fine cortical wispy materials come out of the bag. I'm pushing cohesive viscoelastic to fill the bag here. See, this is an older case. I tried to keep the ionic handpiece in when I pushed that cohesive viscoelastic, but turned the irrigation off. So go ahead and polish underneath the rexus edge, first on the left side and then the right side, polishing and removing the lens epithelial cells. This is a Singer Coke sweeper. It's really a, a nice instrument nice big paddle a nice angle to it this is a single piece of acrylic lens that's going into the capsular bag as the lens unfolds i switch to the ionic hand handpiece once again I only activate irrigation once I go in. Disengage the haptics off the optic, getting underneath the optic, tilting it and rotating it 90 degrees clockwise, removing all the viscoelastic from within the bag, making sure I don't see any lens material between the lens and the bag, pushing the optic back down, switching to polish mode, polishing underneath the rexus edge, and then I'll switch to visco mode, removing all the viscoelastic in the anterior chamber and then on the hydro incision. So again, the concept of double chop, again, you're, you're using the faker tip in a different manner. And that's part of the brilliance of the technique. And so that's why I, I love it and it works so well. And, and, and a lot of you who follow my technique uh, can validate this. So again, what that means is you can use a faker tip in the traditional sense, but then in order to efficiently fracture the lens. You can disassemble the lens with the two instruments, crushing the lens between the chopper and the faker tip. Again, this is very efficient. You can do it in any which angle. You're able to uh, have very, very good control. I'm able to crush the lens at different angles. Again, because I'm not utilizing any ultrasonic energy or vacuum, when I do it, I can place the faker tip deep in the back. I can place it close to the iris. Again, I'm just using it mechanically to crush the lens. Again, hooking the peripheral lens with a chopper is the key because it's the instrument that can actually get around the lens and then proximally using that faker tip as an opposing force to crush the lens completely in half. Again, by doing it this way, I'm able to perform very safe, systematic, efficient lens disassembly, reducing ultrasonic energy. And because I'm utilizing less ultrasonic energy in vacuum, I'm able to keep the corneal endothelium coated more effectively. I'm removing less OVD as a result because I'm keeping that fake tip fairly central in the central safe zone when I'm initiating the vacuum and ultrasonic energy. When I'm going around and fracturing the lens pieces and moving the fake tip around, again, I'm utilizing none of those things just maintaining irrigation, and I'm able to fracture the lens at different angles. And so by doing it that way, I'm reducing OVD removal. Therefore, the corneal endothelium is more effectively protected and coated, utilizing less ultrasonic energy. All of this in combination has led to clearer corneas post-op day one, more of a wow effect for our patients. And in this patient, they did very, very well.
So I hope this was helpful to you. And I thank you for your attention.